from above, see there's this mesoduodenum and descending duodenum hanging on mesoduodenum. So this will be like my two hands holding the stick, descending duodenum. So what's below the... Can you show the mesoduodenum again? Yeah. Where's that coming from? This. It's, it's, it's coming from the root of mesenterium. And cover the lumbar portion of it extends toward the lumbar portion of the abdominal cavity. It's like hanging on a on a hypoaxial muscles, but it's pretty much from the peritoneum. When you have a peritoneum, parietal peritoneum, and visceral peritoneum forming like a mesentery for the water, so it's hanging from peritoneum to the water. Like this from the dorsal. Okay. So that's where we have mesoduodenum and descending duodenum. Below duodenum we have, and it was cut for purpose, you can see that's the superficial leaf of greater omentum, that's this one. We have a deep leaf of greater omentum, which is this one. And behind it is a recess where you have this one, our. Uh, this is the, the part of uh, ascending column, part of cecum. So you have this gyri of ascending column, you can see them over here. And jejunum hanging on a long, long zed. So all this stuff is normally when this will be sutured or not cut, it's in the retro supramental recess. So actually, this is parallel to So when you do the cut, you stick your hand, you see that you can't just go through it. You have to go behind it to really palpate the viscera. So going rostrally, so we are pretty much here, you can see these two structures. So that's the abomasum. Okay, so this is a greater curvature of abomasum. Here we have lesser curvature of abomasum, and this is lesser omentum. So it goes between the abomasum and liver. So what this is, is a proximal loop of, or sigmoid loop of duodenum. Okay, going into descending duodenum. So that's where the abomasum goes toward the world. So when you have replacement of abomasum, sometimes it goes inside. So you need to go behind and push it lateral. Sometimes when it's going to, it goes to cavalry, you go between the wall from this approach. And what I know, sometimes surgeons just suture it to the wall to fix it if this is a significant problem. So that's pretty much how the viscera are located on this side. And look that most of the liver is on the right side. And it's a little tricky because this is reminiscence of falciform ligament. So all this is a left lobe, which is really on the right side, but because it's tilted and pushed by the Roman to the right side. So this is gallbladder. Between the falciform and gallbladder, this is quadrate. So this guy over here will be right lobe. And what's sticking in here is a caudate process of the caudate lobe. So that's how we have liver. And of course, it, this is the diaphragmatic, this is the visceral surface. So that's pretty much what we have on the right side. Let's go to the left side. Yes, please. Yeah, it will give you a little bit of perspective. Sorry. So, so we are on like this right now. So you can see, yeah, whatever works. You can you can see that on the left side, we pretty much have room and spleen. And spleen. So you can see that this is the dorsal side of the rumen. Here we have left longitudinal or lateral longitudinal groove and superficial leaf of greater omentum. That's what originates here. Deep leaf originates from the medial longitudinal groove. And we have spleen sitting on a Roman.
these are only two things we have on the left side. So approaching from the left part of our fossa, we pretty much go into the dorsal sac of the rumen. So when we push it, look how much space we have for to pull the calf from the pregnant uterus. It's, it's pretty decent space. And look at this hole over here. Um, Guessing, and I'm pretty sure that this cow got some problems with the gas inside the rumen. So it happens most often in the fall. Do you know why? There's a lot of fruits falling down the trees. And cows just love apples, plums, pears. They just grab and eat like crazy. And these fruits ferment a lot, produce a lot of gas. And this gas accumulates in a dorsal sac of the rumen, creates a big pressure. So normally look at the parallel morphosa. See, you don't need to pulp it, you see this triangle. When it, when it happens that it's ballooning out, you can have pregnant cow just Fetus, just uterus is pushing on the rumen and ballooning this. When a cow is not pregnant, it's most likely overeating fruits and having the gas into the rumen. So you need to stick trocar. It's like a pipe, like a big needle. So you go in, you anesthetize, of course. You don't go wild with this because you will have cow with a needle and a trocar just running around. So you anesthetize the cow, you go in the middle of this triangle of a parallel fossa and you aim at the contradictory, so the contralateral elbow. You go like this with a trocar and gas is just releasing from the room. There are some issues with the gas mixed with the ingestion forming small bubbles versus large bubbles, but you will have this whole thing later during your curriculum, so they'll tell you what to do when the gas is in the small bubbles. You want to break them to one single bubble of the gas, and this way gas will go out. So that's C-section, gas in the rumen, so trocar, trocarotomy, and you will do rumenotomy. When you need to remove junk, metal junk from the rumen, you Cut the paralumbar fossa after the anesthesia, so the proper branches on the spinal nerve plus epidural. You go into the rumen and first you are in a dorsal sac, so you need to go ventrally, palpate the cranial pillar between the atrium and the ventral sac. And once you are in the atrium, you can palpate that there is some metal thing. Okay? And you grab it you remove it and you can place magnets in this place so they will keep the, the metal stuff away from the diaphragm because you can see so this is the ventral so this will be pretty much the atrium here we have a little bit of reticulum so metal stuff can be in reticulum as well we have a diaphragm and see that's the pericardium so that's the pericardial sac and the heart. Look how close is this, and all this is deflated. Normally it's even closer. So it's easy to puncture the pericardium and the heart just moving by moving diaphragm. And it, nails can go into the heart and that's a big problem. Okay? So that's pretty much what you do from the left paralumbar fossa, right paralumbar fossa, so that's it. <laughs>